in terms of writing the courses and also revise them periodically and if need be they should be translated in other languages also uh, in addition to these jobs the distance teacher is also expected to evaluate the answer sheets the responses and at the same time write comments that is the issue which we are talking about uh, whether uh, uh, it is a very specific uh, quality characteristics that the distance teacher must have looking at all these uh, sort of uh, uh, expectations from the distance teacher we see that the distance teacher is uh, made to work much hard and also has lot many uh, responsibilities as compared to the teacher in the conventional mode uh, but let us also admit that all this is there in the uh, conventional education also the teacher has to perform uh, a lot of uh, roles a lot of uh, work has to be done uh, in the classroom situation uh, which uh, pertains to uh, uh, putting the class in proper discipline to understand the psychology of each and every learner to you know address each and every learner separately uh, then to also uh, look into their background to also uh, address the issues that uh, occurs because there are uh, human beings lively present in the classroom situation so managing a class uh, i mean in nutshell is another challenge which is not uh, there with the distance teacher because he she doesn't have the learners present face to face so uh, all sorts of issues are there but at the same time the conventional teachers are expected to teach in the contact programs also that means uh, just like uh, the distance education the teachers are working as tutors in the conventional education teachers also have to work in the uh, role of teachers in the contact classes contact programs which are held remotely or maybe dispersely in quite a few locations apart from the headquarter or the central place where the university or the institute is, is located looking at all these uh, you know aspects of the uh, teacher in distance education vis-a-vis -vis conventional education we may uh, uh, surmise that uh, there is lot more than just writing than just making correspondence there is need for interactional or a supplemental uh, interaction with the learners with the uh, from the teacher so this supplemental is in terms of not only uh, with regard to academic matters it can be personal matters it can be matters that uh, can uh, be helpful to bring the learners out of his or her isolation uh, then the monotony uh, demot uh, demotivation and so forth so uh, these are there are a lot of uh, such issues which are of uh, maybe very subtle issues but uh, at certain times can play a big role in the uh, life of a distance learner because if a learner is uh, successfully brought out from his or her isolation and made made an active learner there's a huge change in one's uh, in one's study uh, life or study pattern so uh, we have to compare the role of a conventional teacher with the distance teacher and then we can see how uh, the different teacher has to work what are the strategies he or she has to apply or implement uh, similarly there the, the the conventional teacher doesn't uh, write uh, responses in the same manner and the same fashion this is very clear i think all of us have gone through this particular phase and uh, we know that uh, the, the the regular uh, conventional teacher writes good very good excellent uh, rarely explaining what are the uh, why it is excellent why it is very good why it is not very good or so forth but in the tutor's comments or tutor's correspondence with the learners uh, we have found that uh, the comments 
should be substantive should make clear communication should be you know properly understood by the learner and they should not be harmful comments this as far as as possible they should be positive comments they should be uh, comments that uh, uh, supplement the learning of uh, in the distance education so there we can distinguish between the two and uh, find that uh, uh, while the teacher in the conventional mode need not to write the comments the, uh, explicitly or uh, very in very detail because those comments can be explained by the teacher when the uh, students come you know, to show the uh, notebook then the teacher says oh yes very good why i have given you very good because you did all these things much better than the others but there is no such time with the distance teacher with the tutor he doesn't have the learners face to face with him and thereby there is no space there is no scope to explain uh, the performance of the learner except that he or she writes such correspondence such notes which uh, actually convey what the teacher is thinking so this uh, thinking correspondence must be very clear very straight forward very uh, positive so it encourages the learner to further advance in the process of learning so uh, what is the significance of the interaction <clears throat> the significance of the interaction is one that it encourages the learner to come forward and uh, you know move ahead secondly it breaks the monotony and thirdly more importantly it uh, helps the learner to achieve his or her objectives or targets or the aims which he she has set in the beginning to pursue a particular course or particular program now if we come to the last point of this particular uh, unit which is uh, uh, to discuss the uh, supplemental interaction the role of uh, emails email tools this is this has become quite common these days so i do not feel that we should discuss it in too much detail except that uh, definitely email tools are very very important uh, the learners uh, groups are formed and uh, the teacher can send the communication in groups wherever it is meant for the entire group and uh, wherever it is meant for the individual the uh, addresses can be segregated and uh, there can be an individual response the advantage of the email uh, interaction why it becomes more uh, useful for the supplemental interaction is that there is uh, instant feedback instant reaction from the learner and uh, there can be immediate uh, response of the teacher to the learner so what can be achieved A lot can be achieved there can be an improvement in the uh, attempt by the learner if there is a improvement if there is an addition in the course contents that is suggested by the uh, institute or the system then that can be conveyed if it is a, a larger material it can be sent as an attachment and uh, all the tutorials are already available and if there is a missing one th this can be uh, arranged from the universities Uh, resources and the same can be sent to the learner so uh, not only that it prompts an easy access easy exchange of uh, information views uh, i should say the issues uh, etc it also provides an opportunity to the learner to uh, receive certain materials which are not available otherwise which are not at hand so in a way if we compare the learners uh, attitude in the distance learning it is much more demanding it is much more uh, we should say uh, uh, personal uh, personally required uh, because we uh, we we know that the distance learner always is, likes the response which is addressed individually to a particular learner 
uh, so the teacher or the tutor in the distance education has to work in such a way that uh, uh, it addresses the quest of an individual learner so that was all for the uh, uh, for this particular unit four of uh, the block four so we will now move to block five and uh, if we go to block five then our agenda to discuss is the management of learner support so we will perhaps discuss uh, only one unit uh, because uh, there's a huge power breakdown today so we will discuss the very first one which is the learners expectations in distance education we are already talking in the why we are discussing that there is different role for the uh, tutor to play as uh, opposed to the teacher so maybe you are uh, noticing why i am using the word tutor and uh, teacher i am using these two terms very consciously reason being when we uh, use the word teacher it refers to the uh, classroom situation or the conventional teaching so whatever uh, happens whatever the nature of the conventional teaching that becomes part of the teaching uh, methodology uh, teaching or the pedagogy of the uh, conventional teaching but if i use the word tutor it obviously refers to the pedagogy of the distance education so we are uh, already talking about uh, uh, the characteristics the expectations the attitudes the behavior the, of the distance learner so how uh, so accordingly the tutor has to modify his or her response so uh, sometimes we see that uh, the, there is a lot more uh, challenge in the distance education uh, tutor uh, as compared to the conventional teacher but if we go in minutely or subtly uh, in the if we do the micro study of the teaching the classroom teaching there are uh, quite uh, big challenges there also so but uh, overall uh, i just now mentioned that there are several uh, assignments several jobs tasks which are expected of the tutor uh, means uh, the teacher who is working the distance education as i mentioned he should write uh, he should edit he should uh, revise he should uh, make a powerpoint presentation he should make uh, digital digitized contents uh, then he should also uh, translate the courses he should also prepare uh, slides he should also prepare audio video material he should uh, set the question papers then they should be evaluated then award should be awarded the grade should be given so looking at uh, the so many uh, assignments that are uh, uh, associated with the job of a tutor as per the ugc mandate uh, i mean we can assume that his role is very very difficult so there is an obvious sense of uh, biasism that yes the conventional teacher doesn't have so many responsibilities but if we slightly you know and um, more minutely look at the role of the conventional teacher he she has to teach from the text they should also set questions they should also conduct examinations evaluate revise in a classroom situation while teaching or transcribing the instruction of the contents they also have to translate they also have to use multimedia they also have to work in the smart classrooms uh, sometimes they have to prepare notes uh, sometimes they have to prepare certain uh, study materials at home and especially if we look at the covid period uh most of the conventional teachers also taught from their homes so we can see uh, there is a sense of biasism but if we look uh, more uh, subtly more minutely we see that uh, these two are different systems different uh, pedagogies 
they work differently but ultimate uh, objective is same that is the well being of the learner or the to the student achievements uh, to the students in terms of learning that one acquires that one gains after studying a particular course or a program let us now come to the block 5 uh, of uh, mde 413 uh, which is a uh, very important one and this is uh, you know the learners expectations in distance education so we all know uh, what do you mean by learners expectations uh, what a learner is expecting i think the biggest expectation of a learner is that uh, he she is uh, is, is uh, he, her or his voice is always heard the examinations are conducted in time the study material is uh, sent to them in time uh, it is explained properly uh, the uh, the counseling classes are held i think there could be any number of expectations so the very first thing that we must understand uh, and we have been discussing it i think quite extensively uh, it is not new to us now uh, because we are talking about the uh, distance learner who is a distance learner uh riya can you just uh, give two three traits who is a distance learner riya are you uh, able to listen to me are you able to hear me RC Chandigarh, uh, am I audible? Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. So I will continue. So uh, we all know that uh, the uh, distance learner is primarily an adult learner. Let us uh, put this in very first that uh, uh, the distance learner is an adult learner. if one is an adult learner what difference it makes that is very important if we know that he or she is an adult learner then we have to pay uh, we have to treat the student or the learner perhaps little more sensibly little more respectfully than those learners which are there in conventional system may be in studying class 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 11 12 12 so the moment we assign the uh, uh, the tag that he or she is a, is an adult learner because distance learner is an adult learner so uh, why it is uh, so very important to uh, and uh, uh, we are calling adult learner means then a sense of respect is definitely uh, to be there with the treatment in the treatment of the distance learner that is one that may not be the case with the other category of the learners uh secondly very important uh, difference between con- conventional learner and the distance learner is that the distance learner has prior knowledge uh i think uh, this is a very important trait uh, many of our distance learners are coming to learning after many years of gap uh, at an advanced age uh, they might be associated with uh, uh, certain occupation uh, with certain type of uh, education also it is possible therefore we have to uh, assume and we have to think that so the our distance learner who is an adult learner i am putting now in one chain our distance learner who is an adult learner is also having prior knowledge so what type of prior knowledge that might be you know pertaining to his or her own area of work or they might be having some skill they might be having uh, certain other features which should be respected which should be given due advantage in the 
treatment uh, as an adult learner. Uh, our adult, our uh, distance learners are adult learners. They are endowed with uh, prior knowledge, prior uh, previous experience. Therefore, they have specific experience of discharging various responsibilities during their job, during their profession, or if not in the job or profession, they can be family members. So while handling the entire family, one gets a lot of exposure uh, of responsibilities. So if one is responsible in that sense, that means he or she is a responsible learner. So now how many qualities we have attached? Distance learners are adult learners. Uh, they have prior knowledge. Uh, they have uh, previous experience. They know they are more responsible learners. And also, uh, as compared to the conventional students, the distance learners are goal-centric. Why after a gap of five years, eight years or ten years, somebody comes to do post-graduation? If somebody is working in, say, for example, some department, some organization where his or her services are likely to end in a few years, then what he or she will be doing? They will be taking the distance education mode to continue to building their education where they ended it a few years back and uh, took an employment. So now they are again going back to that level of education and now building their career. So that means they are building their career. This board itself denotes that they are uh, aim, uh, having an aim in uh, of their education. They are goal-centric, they are target-centric. So how many qualities we have attached? I think this is very important that uh, the distance learners are adult learners. Uh, they have prior knowledge. Uh, they are also having uh, uh, skills and uh, experiences in particular field of knowledge, particular field of work. Then they are more target oriented and also they are more responsible because they might have already managed either some uh, job or, or maybe if not job, at least they are the family people, so they know how to manage the family. So that means, I think, uh, in a very easy manner, we have brought about very important features of the distance learning. So ultimately, we can say the distance learner is an adult learner, is the learner who is having prior knowledge. These learners are having uh, uh, their own their own goals and aims. They are more focused. Uh, they are uh, responsible learners. Uh, they are specialized in certain skills and professions. And also they are more mature. All these things, what all these things do in one's life, they make one more mature, more responsible, more target oriented, more focused. So this way they are slightly different from the regular or the conventional student. So I think if we look at these traits of the distance learning or distance learner, uh, we automatically come to a conclusion, a kind of conclusion that yes, different learners are, uh, the distance learners are different from the conventional learners. So what uh, uh, difference it makes in their approach of expectations? Definitely, all these features, you know, make them different type of learners. So if they are different type of learners, definitely their expectations, their aim, 
their demands will be different so first of all let us say that if they are target oriented what is their expectation their very first expectation is that they are provided such instruction that helps them to remove the uncertainty so they don't want any element of uncertainty in the approach of the institution which is providing education to them so that means there has to be very clear communication from the uh, university from the institution which is providing education to them so if we look at uh, this very particular aspect then we have to uh, come to another issue which we discussed in the previous unit which was supplemental interaction where we talked about the communication or the correspondence between the tutor and the learner so if we talk about uh, the uncertainty level element of uncertainty in the the communication which is made uh, by the institution by the academic body which is providing this instruction to the learner is free from vagueness is focused is uh, able to guide the learner to achieve his or her goals so how to write the how to write a communication which is uh, free from uh, uncertainties that skill has to be there with the distance teacher second point is very important if we talk about removal of uncertainty then the distance learner will also demand that there is no fear of no fear in fulfillment his or her dreams that means uh, the institution's approach should be such that it assures the learner that yes uh, here we are to fulfill the dreams uh, and it should be able to build confidence in the distance learner in the distance teaching that would be depending upon the overall approach of the institution that is the commitment it makes uh the quality of uh, study material that it prepares the speed with which it uh, provides the study material or the promptness overall uh, the promptness in the overall working overall response to the learners queries that are raised time to time so given this situation i think uh, Uh, the learner's expectations are not only that he or she should be taught uh, the uh, teaching classes should be held now no the, not only this but those demands are much more minute subtle yet very important so that means there is a there is a demand to build confidence in the distance education from the learners that is one there shouldn't be any doubt whether uh, doubt in achieving the goals and aims of the learning so that must be assured and uh, more importantly the distance learner is an adult learner he is an he is an emotional learner uh, this word is very important emotional learner Uh, what do we mean by emotional learning this must be looked into our distance learner is an adult learner is an experienced learner is a skilled learner uh, having prior knowledge able to manage family and profession holding job and responsibilities and a lot many other aspects that are there with the distance learner makes this distance learner expecting a certain level of respect from the organization 
and if that does not happen then the learners expectations uh, do fail and he or she feels let down that should not happen the institution's priority should be to make to build confidence to remove uncertainties no place for ambiguities or vagueness above all <clears throat> the distance learner who is an adult learner and endowed with so many of traits uh, expecting a certain level of uh, respect in treating the distance learner at the same time he expects that he should be happy pursuing the program so there shouldn't be any place for disappointment unfortunately when the institutions fails to commit commitments promises there is a level of a disappointment which comes into the uh, minds of the learners so what i am trying to say is that the learners must drive happiness that is one of the expectation the learners must drive happiness that is one of the expectation while they demand while they deserve respect because they are adult they are experienced they are skilled they have prior knowledge they are responsible they are family men they are job officers holding certain responsibilities they expect that uh, their uh, aims and objectives are met and they are not disappointed uh, there is no uncertainty in in fulfilling their uh, goals and aims what they are doing all these for what is the purpose of doing all this that is that they want to be happy so that means they are emotional learners riya are you listening are you able to hear so they are emotional learners so i think we have added yes sir i can hear you so we have added one very important dimension to the distance learner so we have defined the distance learner now today in a slightly more refined manner right our our distance learner is adult learner having prior knowledge having special area skills and knowledge uh is responsible having fulfilled the responsibilities of job profession and family uh having certain experiences having uh, target in life goal focused oriented deserves special type of treatment which has a certain element of respect thereby he or she demands a commitment from the distance institution distance learning that his or her goals are fulfilled there is no ambiguity there is no disappointment and all this adds to learner's profile which makes him or her very emotional learner and thereby he or she uh, demands that they drive happiness in the pursuit of their academic endeavor so their expectations are very very high is it true does it make sense yes sir it doesn't happen in the conventional if you go to high school students do not have too many aspirations yes so can you hear me yes very clearly Do you want to ask something? No, sir. I don't have any doubts. Okay, okay. So, this is very important. I think uh, this is the essence of the distance learning and uh, the essence of the distance learner. If we are able to 
uh, accept and uh, uh, rather uh, admit, yes, these are the expectations of the distance learner. Obviously, the system has to be very, very responsive, responsible, and prompt, and uh, must make all efforts to fulfill all these promises, all these expectations that the distance learners have. So, uh, uh, in, in general, what do we uh, do in the distance education? We have, you know, uh, made certain notions. What are those notions? Uh, we feel that uh, studying through distance education uh, is very relaxed and one can pursue the course or the program of his or her choice. There is a relaxed entry, relaxed qualification, and except few courses, there might not be any entrance examination. And very importantly, almost everyone will be getting admission or getting admitted, except few institutions like SOM, where there is a bar in certain programs. That is one. I'm talking about these because these create problems later. These raises issues which we sometimes uh, are not able to deal with. Uh, then we say the learner is able to you know, fulfill his or her study uh, pattern or complete the study at his or her own place and pace. At times that doesn't happen and then there is a problem because the learner require help, assistance, or rather uh, guidance and if the institution has not made arrangements for the counseling for tutoring for uh, other type of face-to-face uh, -face interaction or mechanism say online platform chat platforms email arrangements then that creates a problem the third assumption of the distance education in, is that we provide self-learning material. And there is a notion that it is prepared in such a way that it serves, it is self-sufficient, it is self-contained, it is self-directional, self-evaluating, and so forth. Uh, mind you that uh, all these traits are there definitely but then the learner must know how to uh, how to handle all these aspects of the study material so the learner has to uh, be able either to understand himself or herself that yes all these aspects are there which which are there with the study material but how to really utilize them to take advantage of them that becomes a problem. Uh, further, uh, we have a network of uh, learning su le learner support centers. We have network of uh, regional centers. We have network of uh, 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 various other uh, facilities which are provided at different nodes. Then we have a lot of uh, academic counseling, people, those are academic counselors, then there are reference services, which are libraries. Obviously, all these are existing, but the question is whether the learners are making use of them or not. So these are assumptions. Of course, these are realities, but we assume all these things that they work in this particular fashion and they are they make things available. But we have to ensure that all these things are utilized. For making the learners utilizing them, this need for dialogue, this need for interaction, this need for guidance. So we have to ensure if there is an adequate level of guidance, there is availability of resources, yes. But whether the learners are able to approach them, uh, whether they are able to access them, 
that is the question <clears throat> now if we come to uh, our major resource which is the study material so then we have uh, already discussed it is self explanatory self contained self directing self monitoring self evaluating all these like check your progress and uh, uh, self check exercises and self check check your progress etc those tools are there then there is academic counseling which is informing advising and uh, counseling the learners so we know that all these things happen uh, we also know that what the counselors are doing they are trying to uh, you know sort of help the learners personally and through assignments correspondence or the tutor comments uh, then they also provide feedback on particular phase of learning guide them to write proper answers and also take care of their various problems uh that is there these all these things goes into uh, making uh, the infrastructure available uh, uh, but are these are uh, really uh, being utilized that is the moot question so if we look at the moot question then we come to know that uh, this need for proper interaction this need for proper instruction instructions which are free from ambiguity instructions which are very clear and they do not make any uh, false promise and uh, uh, those actually uh, bring happiness in learning so so similarly there is a provision for assignments and grades this uh, we are uh, repeatedly talking about uh, why do we have assignments i have already told you that there are two types of uh, uh evaluations one is uh, uh, formative evaluation which is continuous monitoring and then we have summative evaluation which is terminal examinations so once that uh, assignments are evaluated then the grades or the numerical marks are conveyed along with proper comments those are tutor comments and we have already discussed that tutor comments what are their nature why those are important and uh, what are their classification there are uh, harmful comments positive comments constructive comments marginal comments then there are global comments and so forth so those are there and uh, eventually after the evaluation the grades are awarded so i have told you to that uh, we use five point scale and we also have letter grade which is from uh, a to e and uh, uh, with a corresponding numerical score for that uh, then uh, definitely uh, the open and distance education has been using technology to a large extent uh, it, uh, case study of uh, igno or b a r o u is taken or yashwantrao chavan maharashtra state open university is taken definitely uh, these institutions are making very good use of technology and providing interactive radio counseling teleconferencing chat sessions live video sessions besides uh, a lot of broadcast on the gyanwani channel uh, and also on the gyandarshan television channel so these are there apart from these there is online Uh, education centers established and most of the programs which are there uh, previously in the open and distance learning mode now those are also fashioned for the online mode so they are available we have already spoken about the supplemental interaction through email tools in the unit 4 of block 4 so we all know what are the advantages of uh, email Uh, it is uh, an important uh, platform so very prompt very quick uh, so this has been uh, quite extensively used by the distance education especially as i mentioned igno has taken a lot of advantages of this particular platform uh, we also have uh, you know 
the peer group learning mm -hmm. so a lot of groups have been formed so there is uh, information sources are there and if we look at the advantages of uh, peer group learning uh, i mean uh, in uh, generally it doesn't happen but uh, more recently the university has uh, uh, appreciated and uh, prompted formation of uh, alumni which works in the area of uh, specifically placement during uh, interaction also the uh, peer groups uh, are uh, sharing the information amongst the members or uh, the distance learners apart from it the peer groups are also important you know to bring about information about various institutions and also uh, uh, the, the co-learners of uh, other institutions, how learning is taking place in one particular institution, how the other institution or the members of the peer group can uh, benefit. So they share the, their academic experiences, their academic achievements, and uh, it rather brings a lot of uh, cooperative learning. So now we are uh, calling this as a cooperative learning. Uh, this uh, automatically works as a, as, a, as a counseling tool because if one can receive information from one end and perhaps if one can post an inquiry and if there are a lot of responses to that, so that is a kind of uh, counseling. Similarly, if there are certain uh, questions which have been raised by one particular learner, then he or she receives the responses from other learners or learners from other institutions. Thereby, it is a it is a collaboration. It is a collaboration. It's a it, it's a group uh, sort of uh, learning and brings into learning a lot of ex, uh, experiences from various groups. It is managed by an administrator. And all of you know. So uh, these are basically the uh, institutional arrangements, but uh, let us uh, very critically look at them, how they are helping the learners to uh, fulfill their dreams and whether they are actually able to uh, help the learner to fulfill their dreams. This has to be very critically looked into and viewed. So, uh, uh, I think uh, we will have to end with this particular discussion. So this particular unit one of block five was the learners' expectations in distance education. Primarily, uh, uh, it was to discuss the traits of the learners. So I think we added more dimensions in our today's discussion, particularly adult learners, experienced learners, responsible learners, prior knowledge holding learners, target oriented, vision oriented, and uh, you know, uh, need to fulfill their aims and objectives in life, very particular about the achievements. And all this makes them very emotional learners. That means they deserve certain level of respect. That is the core and the mood point I feel we drive out from this discussion. Now, if you look at uh, as to what is expected from uh, what I think uh, all of us know if it is a distance education, that is a system. We expect that the system should fulfill all our dreams. If it is study material, it should be it, it should be able to cater to all our academic needs. That means uh, if it is self-contained, self-sufficient, self evaluating, self-monitoring, self-promoting, then it should do that. Same is with academic counseling. It has to be empathetic. It has to be uh, consideration. It has to be responsive. It has to be addressing the academic issues. So uh, assignments are there, then teleconferencing, use of technology, peer groups and institutional services. All those things are there in place. So this was about the unit one. We will discuss unit two, three, and four tomorrow. So with this, uh, I will conclude this session. 
there has been a power breakdown for the last almost one hour. So I am almost running out of battery. So before I uh, face that situation, okay. I say I say goodbye. Have a very good day and thank we'll you, meet. sir. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You, sir. So we'll, we'll meet tomorrow. Okay, sir. Tomorrow. Okay. 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 Good day. Good day. Good day. So good day, RC Chandigarh. Also, to you, very cooperative. Thank you very much. Uh, it is rather becoming very uh, discomfort here. There is no electricity, yet, but uh, nevertheless, uh, my system supported this session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Okay.